Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. And Tom, thank you. Because our journey began in the summer of 74 at the Broncos Mile High Stadium, a journey of shared experiences built on loyalty and trust. And 50 years later, we stand here on the Pro Football Hall of Fame stage. My admiration and respect to you, Tom, and your wife, Jen, we certainly appreciate that. And we shared that special bond with you, and we're very grateful for that. Congratulations to Steve and Devin and Andre and Julius and Patrick. We are the pro football class of 24, 2024 class of that, you know, going into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Well, th and I want to thank you, uh, prep team, for your tireless prep work, which you gave me and everyone a fantastic week this week. Hall of Fame President Jim Porter and Mayor Bill Shear, Commerce Chamber of Commerce staff and the volunteers. I just want to thank you for your leadership, which is the backbone of the event, uh, success of all these events that have happened this week. To the Broncos and Bronco country, I would not be standing here without you because the best franchise and the best fans in the NFL are the Broncos. And I want to thank Greg and Carrie Penner and Mr. Walden for the, the ownership of the Broncos and what you've done for me and for all of the Bronco alumni that are there today. My wife Beth and I are pray, uh, attend Brave Church in Denver, which are Pastor Jeff leads, who's here today with his wife Kim. Pastor Jeff and Kim and Brave Church friends who are here today, there's Mike and Jane and Tom and Linda, Mike and Deb, Tom, Margaret, Phil, David, Chris, and Josh, and Barry and Susan that are in Alaska, and my Brave Church family watching at home. Thank you for your love and for your support. Earlier this year, Pastor Jeff taught a series built to last from the book of Nehemiah. And one of the messages of the series was Difference Makers. And Pastor Jeff asked us to consider who made the dis difference in our lives. And today I want to recognize a number of key individuals who made a profound difference in my life. My wife Beth, when she, when friend Sandy Weiss introduced us, I said, wow, she's gorgeous. Sandy Weiss was Norris Weiss's wife. And he was a close friend, and he was a Bronco quarterback when I played. And at the age of eight, 43, he had spinal cancer, and that took his life. And Beth was his hospice nurse. And after Norris passed, Santry, Sandy introduced me to Beth. Beth, you're a miracle. I thank God that his perfect plan for my life was you. Your kind and compassionate soul captured my heart for sure. You love your love and for work tirelessly for the good of others, especially your brother, John David, who has a heart of gold just like yours. Beth, I love you and I cherish you. Thank you. My parents, Jim and Ann from Old Champion, Ohio, about 40, 45 miles from here, uh, my dad and mom were quite natured, humbled people, and diligent at their work. Mom was a great homemaker. Dad and his brother-in-law, Bill, owned B&J Grocery Store. Uncle Bill's son, my cousin Bill Jr., and his wife Gretchen are here today. And thanks for your memories. I love you. Watching my dad, especially at his B&J Grocery Store, taught me valuable lessons early on in my life. And at the age of 12, I loved working at my dad's grocery store. I watched how he took pride in serving his customers and with kindness and respect. 
how it impacted my life. I remember one day, Dad didn't serve. He didn't open his B&J grocery store. It was June 6, 1980, a ruptured aneurysm took my dad's life. He was 60, I was 28. A significant loss in my life and for Champion Ohio, my dad was deeply loved and respected. I lost my dad, but I didn't lose the principles he and my mom taught me by example. Honesty, loyalty, and disciplined work ethic that allowed me to serve others with generosity and fun. Buckeye native and my OSU teammate, two-time two Heisman Trophy, Archie Griffin, somewhere down here. Archie Griffin, thank you. Archie, Archie years ago invited me to a on-campus Fellowship of Christian Athletes meeting Bible study during my senior year. Growing up, I attended church, but the gospel of salvation wasn't taught. That evening, in 74, the gospel was explained in four simple truths. Truth one, God created mankind in His image, and that comes from Genesis 1:27. God loves us and offers a plan for our life. Truth two, mankind's problems are from Romans 3:23, that we have all sinned and fallen short of God's glory. Therefore, we cannot know and experience God's love and plan for our lives. Romans 6:23, the wages for the wages of sin is death our spiritual death. And truth number three, God made a way out of John 3, 16, that God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. Jesus Christ's death on the cross, the darkest day in history, and Jesus' resurrection earned Jesus the right to proclaim, I am the way, the truth, and the life and no one comes to the Father but through me. That's out of John 14, 6. And the fourth truth, salvation requires turning to God. Repent of our sins, accept His forgiveness, and ask Jesus by faith to be your personal Lord and Savior. This is the only way to be right with God and to live out His plans for our, our life, not ours. For, thank you. There's four, four simple but eternal truths. Archie, you were an OSU sophomore at the time when you invited me to the Fellowship of Christian Athletes meeting, the best invitation I've ever had. And at age 22, I received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. To my key prayer warriors, Beth and Pastor Jeff and Kim, cousins Joe and Annie, Men in my Bible study, Bob and Diana Blake, Dale Morris, Linda Rogus, and her late husband, Roger, thank you. The greatest gift we can give and receive, really, is prayer. My high school football coaches, Al Carino, Bill Thorne, Jim Betts, and Jerry Carlton. Jerry, thank you for being here today, and a few other men, because at Champion High School, you guys, and when I was in ninth grade, developed the football program my freshman year. Thank you for your investing in me and to learn the sport and to have a lifelong friendship, for sure. You and Carol are special to Beth and me, and I want to say thank you. My high school basketball coach, Roger Rogas, passed in 2017. Uh, like Coach Carlton, made a difference in my life with his encouragement for me to be the best I could be, not just in sports, but in life. Coach Roger's wife, Linda, your husband, my coach, influenced me as a young kid of who he was, of a man of faith and integrity. And your walk with the Lord and friendship have been a blessing to me and Beth. And I say, I want to say, I love you. Coach Buckeye Woody Hayes. Are there any Buckeyes here? Woody, Woody was committed to the best, and we all felt that. 
And his most valuable experience Coach Woody had in my life was his pay-forward lifestyle. And Friday, during spring quarters, Woody and I and the team went to assisted living homes, facilities, middle schools, high schools, and we went through them talking to people. And so Coach Woody Hayes' pay-forward philosophy really influenced me to develop a lifestyle of serving. Any Bronco fans? Hey, thank you. You're the best. My Bronco head coach, John Ralston, impacted my life. During my senior year at Ohio State, I sustained a knee injury and I had surgery and it was somewhat successful. And I knew and others knew that my knee wouldn't ever be the same for sure. But Coach Rawson took a chance on me and drafted me back in 1974. The rest is history. Bronco coaches Red Miller, Dan Reeves, Stan Jones, Joe Collier, Merle Moore believed in me and encouraged me. They encouraged once was the greatest gift of, that our coaches would give to me and to our team, encouraging us to give our best. That would be our motivator to do the best that we can be. And Merle Moore is here today, my linebacker coach. I want to say thank you. I don't know where you're at down here somewhere, but I want to say thank you for being here and uh, for the investment that you made in us for our skill set so that we would be different. We would have a different skill set in winning and learning and that we would be mentally prepared for each and every game. Uh, our mental toughness was our success to what we did with that Orange Crush defense. Um, our late great um, Orange Crush defensive coordinator, Joe Collier, passed away a, a few months ago. Joe wasn't just a great coach, but he was one of the leaders and mentors that any NFL player would really want to have on their side. So I want to thank um, Lyle and Paul and Joe and Patrick and uh, Bur uh, Louie and Steve and Randy and Randy, Paul, John and Carl. I want to thank you guys and some of the other guys on our team for what we became, because we, we were always the Orange Crush defense. We are a very explosive, dominant, winning force because Coach Joe Collier wanted the best for us, and in turn, he got the best from us. So Joe Collier's legacy, loyal, commitment, humility, quiet strength, and encouragement made lifelong differences in many athletes of our lives. And then there's Jay Chimino. He was the president and CEO of the Phil Long dealerships in Colorado. Almost 30 years ago, Joe, J Jay hired me 30 years ago to work in the corporate communications division at, Pro at uh, Phil Long. And Jay was a genius in every sense of the word. Jay could see people's potential for sure and then who and what they really could do and become. He brought out the best in hundreds of lives. And one of Jay's greatest strengths was he was a trustworthy man of his word, foundational in his relationship. You make a promise or a vow, you keep it. Credibility depends on it for sure. For almost three decades, Jay and a few other men presented my case to the Hall of Fame Selection Committee. They believed I was worthy of, to be a candidate for the induction into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Jay's 30-year vision and labor came to fruition. On January 26, this year, I received the news I had waited 35 years to hear. I was chosen for the Pro Football Hall of Fame. I immediately, I, I immediately called Jay, who can only imagine how we felt. And then less than four weeks later, in uh, end of January, uh, Gina Sacraponte, our Phil Long dealership's corporate communications director, called to say that Jay had passed. 
And it was, for me, it was a gut punch, for sure. And I stand here today without Jay, but everything Jay built into my life stands before you. Gina Chimino, thank you for your family and for sharing your dad uh, with all of us at the Phil Long dealerships. And he's very, very deeply missed. But he's with us in spirit here even today. And I'm grateful to God for the key individuals he brought into my life. Difference makers, because among other strengths, they are loyal and trustworthy. My favorite life verses are Colossians 3, 23 and 24. Work diligently for the Lord rather than people. What does God mean by that? Don't work for status, power, wealth, materialism, or people's recognition. All that is very, very temporary. But in all you are and all you do, work for God's glory because he will give you an inheritance as your reward, a reward that's built to last. That's not my promise, that's God's promise. Thank you. And so today, I dedicate my Pro Football Hall of Fame 2024 induction to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave me his life so I could be built to last. Thank you, and God bless. Thank you.